force will be with you, always. Unfortunately, the force of gravity was against me, and I suffered an inconvenient impact with the hard Wisconsin earth. Ouch! Hi, folks. While at AirVenture Oshkosh 2022, I had the distinct privilege to meet Terry Raber, the original designer of the Aerolite 103. Stick around to hear Terry tell his fascinating story. Hi folks, we got a special treat this morning. We have the man who invented the Aerolite 103. And uh, I want him to tell you his story and how it all happened. Hello, I'm Terry Raber. I originally designed the airplane 25 years ago. That's when I debuted at Air at Oshkosh. Um, I'd been in the industry many years before that, but I was doing accessories. Sold other, you know, everybody else's airplanes. But at the time, it's like there was never like the perfect ultralight out there. So that's when I decided, you know, it's time to show them what my version of the perfect ultralight is. So that started me thinking and drawing and coming up with the design. It took me probably about, I'd say, two years prior to when I debuted it that I actually started the design work on the airplane. Yeah. And... Um, Built the first prototype, came to Oshkosh in 97, right. and um, debuted it, and, and then now it's 25 years later, and there's hundreds of airplanes out there flying. It's really neat to see, you know, on like YouTube people having their, their day, you know, starting and they're smiling flying their airplane, <laughs> and so it's really neat to come back, you know, full circle, 25 years later. Dennis builds the airplanes. You see all these happy customers. And, and then you still see the interest in the airplane. There's constantly people looking at the airplane, studying it, and, and dreaming, you know, like, one day, this is going to be my airplane. You know, as you're talking, as a young man over here, he must be about seven or eight years old, and he's sitting in the cockpit of this airplane. Just, you know, he's got that vision right now, like, wow, I, I, one day I'm going to fly something like this. Yes, and that right there is the future of aviation. Exactly. It's these young kids exactly. that we need to get into the sport because that's what keeps it going. Yes, yes. And I remember being young like that because I started with model airplanes. Right, right. And anytime you could get a, a chance to sit in an airplane sure. was just like amazing, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, now, uh, I think you mentioned to me that, that you've not really taken many iterations on that design. You were pretty good right out of the chute. Yes, that's one thing with designing the airplane that I, I, I was really happy about because I've never... You, know, you see people come up with a design and it goes through version one, two, three, and multiple. This airplane, when I designed the airplane, it was right on. Wow. There were no changes other than one exception. The first media flight was Dan Johnson, and he did not like the twist <laughs> like throttle. Dan. Yep. Yes, so that was the only change. It went from a twist throttle right. to the regular standard throttle because he said it's not intuitive. It's right. not standard and I agreed and it's not a motorcycle right so no it had a friction lock and everything but sure. was was nice about it is you had your throttle right on the brake lever oh yeah so it did dual purpose right but it was not you know conventional so that was the only thing that ever got changed on the airplane um, other than any other chain engine choices you know there were all different types of engines you, know, you could use everything from a the hearth f33 the 28 horsepower right. clear up to like a 503 yes. It took it out of the ultralight category, but there's like endless engine choices, same as like Dennis is putting new ones on now. So that's about the only thing that's ever changed on the airplane is just different power plants. And, and you design, now you design that airframe to support all those variations in horsepower and, and you know, torque and all that. Yes, that was, that's really one of the challenges when you design an airplane is making one that can fly on very little horsepower 
or a lot of horsepower depending on if you got it on floats or you're doing you know some people use them for ag spraying there's all kinds of stuff you can use these planes for right. Right. and you got to design the airplane so that you can use multiple motors like that mm -hmm. um, and that's what's amazing with the airplane is back in the day when I came out with this airplane Everybody had to run like a minimum of like a 447, a 40 horse motor, sure, sure. to get good performance out of the airplane. Right. Well, when you design an airplane that's efficient, yeah. lightweight, yeah. this airplane did the same thing on 28 horsepower. So those are the, the challenges. Most people think that, oh, you start with a big engine and go from there. No, you want to build it and design it so you use the least amount of power because that's when the airplane flies the best. When it's the lightest, least amount of power, it's the perfect equilibrium is what it is. The airplane is just in its place. You know what I mean? Well, now, over this 25 years, you've seen the, this idea of yours turn into just a phenomenon. Yes. And it uh, must make you feel really good. It does make me feel really good. You know, when I was, when I was actually building the airplanes, you know, you're so busy with just building and exactly. delivering and parts and you don't get to sit back and enjoy it now that I'm out of the picture and I just get to sit back and see someone else doing all the work and I get more of the enjoyment out of it see the happy customers and people loving to fly their airplane and seeing like that little kid over there at loving his day is that's what I like about it you know what I mean so a little more time to like take it all in now, you know what I mean, so. That is great. Yes, it is. Um, 25 years, now what uh, what goes on here with a 25 year celebration of this? That I don't know, I'm, <laughs> that's why I'm here. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm assuming, you know, I, I do believe it's in one of the uh, EAA magazines, sure. which I have not seen yet. Right. Um, you know, and doing the normal press and I never, when I came out with the airplane, I never thought, where am I going to be in 25 years? Right, of course. Well, I'm here yeah. today, yeah. you know, and I'm experiencing it, right. which is really pretty cool, to be honest, yes. you know what I mean? So you just never think of that when you do it at the time you're wrapped up in the airplane and getting it out and all the, and now it's, now I stop and I look and it's like, this is 25 years. Yeah, yeah that's a quarter of a century. That's a long time. Yes, it is. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really pretty cool. It is definitely cool. Well, that's that's fantastic. I mean, you, the marketplace has really, uh, you know, really turned around and, and made your your idea into a fantastic product. Now EAA is is recognizing 25 years of of this airplane. Yes. So it is uh, now the standard, because when I came out with it, you know, my goal was. It was a Quicksilver at the time. During that time was the gold standard. Right. That's what everyone tried to achieve. Yes. You know what I mean? But I wanted to make a modern version of what an ultralight was and make it the standard. Everyone compares to the Aerolite now, right. not the Quicksilver. Even though it's a great airplane, but it's 1970s technology. Right. This is the, the, I feel the gold yeah, standard now in ultralight aircraft. That's fantastic. Yep. It actually meets the weight, flies the correct speeds, yes. you know, so it's a real, true, legal ultralight. And people, I remember many of the years back when I used to sell other airplanes, everybody else, I was a dealer for everybody else. Mm -hmm. I made accessories that I sold to everybody else. Right. And no one told me it could be done, including, I think, the EAA. Sure. Since it just can't be done yet, you yeah. know what I mean? And I, I decided, you know, it can be done. Yes. And I did it because these airplanes fully equipped come in under 250 pounds or more in about the 242 pound range. Right. Right. So we're way under that 254 limit. So it can be done. Exactly. <laughs> and it's right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> there it is, right over our yes. head. Yes. Well, Makes me smile every time I look at oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terry Raber, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you in the person. I've read so much <laughs> about you and I really appreciate you doing this little interview yeah. with us. I, it, I, I love it. Okay, <laughs> take care. Hope another good 25 more years. Yeah, okay. I'll see you back Thank here on you. the 50th. There you right? go. <laughs> Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't, and share this video with your friends. As always, I appreciate your comments.
Until next time, take care and watch out for that last step.